Minecraft hacks the bane of all multiplayer servers. Players who gain an unfair advantage and ruin the game for others. But while cheating is bad, it also serves a purpose, especially so back in the early days of the game. You see, back then the game was highly exploitable and many of the exploits which hack clients or mods abused had to be patched to ensure the game wasn't completely unplayable for standard players. Not only that, but as we enter 2012, hack clients would begin to force plugin developers to create anti-cheats that would improve the player experience and pave the way for even more plugin development in the future. But anti-cheats and hacks have always been a cat and mouse game, and as one feature would get patched, another would be just waiting around the corner. Back in the early 2010s, hack clients were mostly private, and if they were publicly released, they often were infested with rats or other compromising software. These days, however, some hack clients are so mainstream and so well known that the vast majority of the Minecraft community know what they are. And these days, they also contain some highly advanced features such as bots and AIs which can do many human functionalities. But how did they get this far? Well, today, I'm going to tell you about the history of Minecraft hacks and hack clients, including some of the first game modifications and how they evolved to what we see today. But before I do, you need to know that if you use any hack clients or other in-game modifications which are disallowed on servers, you will be banned. Use of many of the clients and cheats I'm going to showcase in today's video are prohibited on large servers such as Hypixel who will ban you. Anyways, let's go back to 2010 now, a time period where Minecraft was still relatively dormant, but growing. The first known Minecraft hack, or cheat, was made sometime in July of 2010, when a video was uploaded to YouTube titled, How to Get Minecraft Hacks. The video went into detail about how to install and use the World of Minecraft client wrapper, which is basically a mod. The mod was made for one of the Minecraft classic versions, 0.30 to be specific, and it's very basic functionality, allowing you to fly, no clip, and move super fast in classic creative servers. Basically, the mod only had movement based features, nothing too crazy yet. Now while this is the first cheat I could find, it's unconfirmed as to if it's the first, as many people made their own modifications similar to this due to the ease at which Minecraft could be modded. You see, back then, without getting too technical, a good chunk of trust was placed in the client as Notch and other developers were only amateur at this time. What I mean by that is that many calculations and game functionalities were done client side, meaning they could be modified and altered on the client side as well. This is very different to today's Minecraft, where the vast majority is done server side now. Anyways, only a few months later, in September of 2010, another cheat surfaced titled MC Cheat. A video I found on YouTube exhibits its functionalities, and to summarize, it's basically an inventory editor which worked on survival multiplayer servers, allowing you to spawn in blocks and other items at will. Mods like this only work due to the lack of security which was implemented into the Minecraft client, and would never work in this day and age on multiplayer servers. Moving into late 2010 and early 2011 now, and Minecraft began getting more frequent updates and also began to rapidly increase in popularity. But the game was still highly exploitable, and it was in January of 2011 that one of the first, if not the first, hack client was developed for Minecraft, Reliant, used by the famous griefing group Team Abolition. If you don't know who they are, Team Abolition was a group of Minecraft griefers who would upload griefing videos from early 2011 all the way up to late 2013. Now, Team Avo were not your average run of the mill griefers, as we'll get into shortly. They had advanced skills and knowledge, allowing them to exploit issues within the game. Not only did they have impressive knowledge and coding skills, but they were also coordinated and skilled in social engineering, allowing them to grief or take down many servers during Minecraft's early days. But for more info on that, you can watch this video here. Reliant was initially created by Krisk, who was also known as Sirenfall, but due to its private nature, there isn't too much public information outside of what we see in their griefing videos. Fortunately, I was able to get into contact with Sirenfall, and he was able to tell me about the history and development of the client. Before they uploaded to YouTube, the Team Abolition group played Survival Minecraft as normal together on a server, and one day some members of the group decided to go mining, but couldn't find any diamonds to make a pickaxe, so they went to another member of the group, Storm Surge's stash, and took some. The story goes that he had a mild freakout in Ventrilo, which for those of you who don't know, is an application similar to Discord with voice and text chat. Anyways, the rest of the group finding Storm Surge's reaction hilarious, decided to steal his diamonds again. After another funny reaction, Storm moved and hid his chest, but another member of the group named Jade managed to find it once more. Storm would then hide his chest even more secretly, and finally the group were unable to find it. But Sirenfall hadn't given up yet. He decided to make a texture pack which would make all other block textures transparent, basically an x-ray texture pack, so that he could find Storm's hidden chest. But in this old version of the game, any blocks surrounded on all four sides would not be rendered as a performance optimization, meaning Sirenfall still couldn't find Storm's chest. 
but Sirenfall did not give up yet. He opened up the game's code and patched the game so it would render chests even when the chest was covered on all four sides. He would use this patch to find Storm's chest and take his diamonds, but this time Storm, once learning how they found the chest, thought it was hilarious. From then on, the group had gotten bored of survival and decided to shift their main focus to griefing. Sirenfall would continue developing the client by himself for the first year, utilizing the many exploits in beta Minecraft, and over time he introduced more and more modules. Eventually, as the game received more and more updates, plugins such as No Cheat became problematic, so Storm Surge began helping develop features for the client. So what were some of these features? Well, before we get into that, if you are enjoying the video, then consider subscribing. No pressure though. Anyways, there was Jade Vision, which was just X-Ray, a teleport command, dot up, which let you teleport instantaneously up or down. Also present were Fly Hacks, Speed Hacks, and a version of Free Cam similar to modern versions that we see today, but they were still able to interact with the world in this version. Then there were more unique ones such as Lights Out, which would punch and destroy every torch within a certain radius, and Sign Modifier, which edited every sign on the server to whatever they wanted. They also had a lot of features which we see in modern day clients, and they arguably added these first, including a Nuka, No Fall, Kill Aura, Reach Hacks, Traces, and Fulbright. Now Reliant was never a public client, it was kept within Avo's circle, and according to Sirenfall, they would give their friends and other people they met a version of the client to use which lacked some of the more advanced modules and features, such as a server crash module. Now because Sirenfall sold this version of Reliant multiple times, it was rumoured that one of the people who bought it leaked it. However, it was actually found out that a moderator of a server they griefed on, who joined them for some future griefing, accidentally leaked the version of the client which didn't have as many features, and that is why some people have this version to this day. But the real Reliant, with all its modules and features, has never been made public. So now we're moving into 2012, and as I mentioned, at this time a lot of clients were still private. Well this is where things would change, and history would be written. During late 2011, in Minecraft Beta version 1.8, the first real public hack client would be released. Notice, as it was called, was a client developed by a user named Sketch, aimed at helping players with griefing as well as PvP. Notice was quite revolutionary, as not only was it arguably the first proper free client out there, but it also contained one of the first click GUIs, a feature which we see in all hack clients today, allowing you to move the customizable GUI around. Notice was so influential that an updated version of NoCheat called NoCheat Plus was developed just to deal with it. The client's popularity would increase during 2012, but the original creator Sketch discontinued development of it in early 2013, stating that the community had become toxic. Wizard Hacks took over and continued developing the client under the name Notice 2.0 up until version 1.8, where it remains to this day. So let's talk about some of the features and modules of Notice now. As you can see, there are lots, including a customizable x-ray, common in modern day clients, client side weather toggles, a bunch of tracer and waypoint features, and the ever so useful Fulbright. As for movement based features, well there is auto walk, sprint, water walking or Jesus, fly, free cam, and a bunch more. Then for combat, there was aimbot, which would aim your mouse at the player for you, and a modified version of kill aura called force field, which allowed you to hit multiple entities within range of you automatically, all at once. Then of course, there's fast break, fast place, etc., and a bunch of other building tools that never really worked on most servers due to anti-cheat. Notice continued to be one of the most popular clients throughout 2013 and part of 2014, and really changed the game, forcing server owners to use anti-cheats or suffer the consequences. But as we move into late 2014 and 2015, it began getting replaced by another notable client. On May 8, 2014, Worst Client was created by Alexander0998, a client with great similarities to Notice in terms of its modules and features, but also became very popular due to its easy to use and understandable GUI. The client also gained extreme popularity because it was able to bypass the most popular server at the time, Mineplex's anti-cheat. It is still updated and used to this day, and is frequently one of the first clients to update to Minecraft's newer versions. However, while it's incredibly recognisable, it has fallen behind in features compared to modern day clients, and as such gets vast criticisms, especially among players on Anarchy servers. But nevertheless, it has a rich history, and was one of the most known and used clients during 2014 and 2015, continuing the legacy of Notice. Now a lot of the older versions of Worst are no longer available for download as it contained part of Minecraft's code and as such were requested to be removed by Mojang. So let's look at one of the modern day Worst clients and see some of its features. One interesting thing is that these more modern clients even come loaded with a version of Optifine. Anyways, some of Worst's notable features are True Sight, which allows you to see invisible entities, then there are a bunch of ESP features for chess, entities and players. A bunch of auto features including auto soup, auto potion, auto mine, auto farm and more. 
and also a bunch of movement modules including bunny hop, Jesus, free cam, high jump, glide, and of course, even more. And then finally, there's a bunch of combat modules such as kill aura and regen. Worst is highly customizable and you can set binds and alter many features within it. A lot of these features would become major selling points of hack clients in the future. And later in the video, you'll see just how impactful worst client really was. Moving into 2016 and 2017 now, and things began to change. In these years, we have the emergence of what's known as ghost clients, which are clients designed for PVP servers. Now, what makes ghost clients different to normal clients is that they are also designed to stay hidden from not only server-side anti-cheats, but also from screen shares. Screen shares are where server staff force players to screen share their game on Discord or TeamSpeak when they are suspected of cheating, often revealing client GUIs and other files of game modifications, but these ghost clients supposedly get around that. What's interesting is that most ghost clients are paid and there are barely any reputable free clients out there, meaning that they are relatively rare to see. This is an intentional tactic used by the developers as the less people that have the client, the harder it is to detect and patch its many exploits. Now it's uncertain as to how well these work. I've never used one myself and players have been banned for using them in the past, but let's talk about one client in particular, Vape Client. The key feature of Vape Client and many other Ghost Clients is their high combat customizability, ranging from blatant cheating to basically normal play. This allows users to customize their cheats such as reach and auto clicker, fine tuning them to the point where it's almost unrecognizable that they are cheating. This is one of the reasons they are called Ghost Clients. Now, as for their main feature, and second reason they are called Ghost Clients, is that they can self-destruct. Using a light version of Vape Client called Vape Light allows you to run the client somewhat externally, as you can see on your screen now. What cheaters do when they get frozen and ask to screen share on account of being suspicious is simply close the client, removing any easy trace of cheats. Now, there are still ways around this, and certain files can be found that display proof of cheating, but that is far more difficult to detect when screen sharing, and if the cheater knows their stuff, they can even quickly get rid of all evidence. To combat ghost clients, many big PvP servers require players to use what's known as cheat breakers, or other custom clients such as Badline and Lunar Client, which are supposedly impossible to cheat on. But due to their ghost-like nature, it's just very difficult to know how many people use these clients, as if set up right, they can be almost undetectable. Moving into 2017, 2018, and modern day now, we have the massive spike in popularity of hacked clients due to the popularity of anarchy servers increasing. Now many clients have come and gone, but the two most popular right now are Impact and Future. Impact being free and Future being paid. First of all, let's talk about Impact, a client which became popular in 2016 after the Camping Russia used it and promoted it. It continues to be the leading free client used on anarchy servers due to its advanced modules and features, its most advanced and notable feature is Baritone, an AI Pathfinder bot which can build automatically, find diamonds and mine them automatically, escape 2b2t spawn automatically, and much, much more. Using simple commands, you can make it do your bidding and watch as it goes the most efficient path to whatever you desire. Baritone works incredibly well, and currently Impact Client is one of the only with it. Now, Impact also has a bunch of other features, including Kill Aura, Criticals, Aimbot, and many other common combat features, as well as dozens of ESP and X-Ray based modules, which are highly customizable, including traces and trajectories. However, a feature which many modern day clients have implemented that those in prior history lack is New Chunks, a cheat which allows you to see when you're generating new chunks, very useful in Anarchy servers for finding chunk trails to players' bases. Now, Impact has many other features, and they are highly customizable, but let's move on to the second most popular client at the moment, Future. Future Client is a premium client, meaning you have to purchase it, which is what I did for this video. Similar to Impact, Future is the other client of choice on Anarchy servers, with its many customizable modules and features. A reason why Future Client is useful is that it normally has exploits designed to dupe that last longer and don't get patched as often as on Impact Client, thus making it one of the preferred clients for duping. Besides that, it doesn't have too much more special than Impact, and players who use both often on Anarchy servers tend to say that Future is an optimized, more refined version of Impact, rather than an upgrade or improvement. Anyways, as for its notable features, while its Auto Crystal feature is highly customizable and it has a good whole ESP to go along with it, it also has a really good Elytra Fly, and its new chunks feature is very well designed. Future Client also contains a unique feature for Tab, which allows you to see all names on servers, and a bunch of other features, some of which we have already talked about today, so I won't really go into detail on them. But all in all, Future Client is regarded as a highly optimized version of Impact, even if it does lack a few of Impact's more advanced features. So that's the history of Minecraft hacks, from simple game modifications to complex clients with hundreds of customizable features, forcing anti cheats to constantly update. Hacks and hack clients have come a long way over the past decade, and these days we have clients so advanced that they can play and do things for you. 
Now before I end the video, I need to reiterate that prohibited game modifications and hacked clients will get you banned on servers and should not be downloaded unless you're planning to play on servers which allow them, such as Anarchy. Please be careful if you do so, as there are many fake clients and dodgy websites which you don't want to have to deal with. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's history video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you did. Thank you all so much for watching.